Can't decide which river cruise line is best for you? Today we're taking a look at two of our favorites, Avalon Waterways and Uniworld Boutique Cruise Line. Stay tuned. My guest today is Sherry Marsh, owner of Cruise Holidays Land and Sea based in Raleigh, North Carolina. Sherry is an avid river cruiser and has been meeting the needs of her clients in and around Raleigh, North Carolina, and across the country since 2012. Hi, Sherry. Welcome back to RTE Travel Talk. Hey, Ken. How are you this morning? I'm wonderful. It's great to have you back with us. Nice to be so, here. Listen, Sherry, we get a lot of questions and comments from our viewers, and one thing they're asking about is Uniworld Boutique River Cruises and also Avalon. Now, I happen to know that you probably cruised with both, so I would oh. thought I would come to the expert today to do a bit of, bit of comparison between Avalon and Uniworld. Okay, that sound? perfect. Let's go. Sounds like a plan. All right. So did you want to just give us a quick 30,000 foot level of both lines, Sherry? Sure. Take either one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's start with Uniworld. What exactly do they mean by a boutique cruise line? Well, boutique means small, fashionable, um, intimate. Uh, basically, I would say that about almost any river cruise line, that it's small, intimate. But the fashionable part, that's definitely how I would describe Uniworld. I would describe it as, I tell my people all the time, it looks somewhat like an English tea room. Okay. So kind of upscale. Definitely on the upscale side. And do you find it to everybody's taste? Well, no. And sometimes people will look at it online. And, and I've had men, especially men, tell me, I don't really think that's my taste. And I remind them that they're not redecorating their house to look that way. They're only renting it for a week or two and that they can <laughs> give it back. <laughs> and once they realize that, they're like, oh, okay, but I'm going to be honest with you. When I saw it online myself, I was like, oof, looks like my mother-in-law's house. And sorry, in case she watches. And yeah. um, it's not my taste, but honestly, I got on board and especially the blue and white, which is one of my favorites. Um, it grew on me within about 48 hours and I fell in love with it. So again, but I got to give it back after a week and that's a good thing. How does the... Uh service measure up like with with an upscale look are we getting upscale service i think that um anytime you're on a river cruise uh avalon uniworld you're getting upscale service i think you may feel a little difference with uniworld because you have a few i mean we are comparing the two so right. let's just start right there you yeah. have a few less passengers on uniworld than you do on avalon but the same, almost the same amount of um, service, and not because I think they're um, they're better, but I just think when you have any type of a ratio difference, you feel the difference. So that's what you're really feeling is you're feeling the ra the service ratio difference. Right. So exactly, a little bit more attention to a little bit more personal attention. Little details. Little yeah, details. because they have the time. Exactly. So, like, we compare the two lines. How does the decor? differ from, say, for example, Avalon Waterways? You know, I think I have to go back again to what I kind of said in the beginning. Um, when you when I walk onto Avalon, I feel like I'm walking into my own home, into my own living room. It's it's you know, it's a it's a it's a it's a living room. It's it it's a very comfortable. It's you know, it's nice sofas, nice, relaxing chairs. It's not Ikea. It's, right. um, you know, it's, it's very comfortable. It's, it's, but when you walk into, um, into Uniworld, it is, it, it is a little more royal feeling you, you, because it is, it's, it's kind of fashioned after England and England is royal. Right. So it's a little more of a, of a royal feeling. It does make you feel like maybe you are in a palace. Right. It gives you that type of a feeling. It's not a bad thing. It's not uncomfortable. It's not stiff. It doesn't mean that you have to dress up. It doesn't mean any of that. It's just meant to give you that your special, your royal feeling. And it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's a very, very good thing. But people, when they see it online, the very first question they ask me is, do I have to dress up? No. <laughs> So with Uniworld, then, even if it, is, it appears to be a bit fussy on, 
looking at it online, it's still a relaxed atmosphere. Same, yeah, just I mean, the same as Avalon. With all, with all, yeah, exactly. With all river cruises, you know, nighttime apparel is basically country club casual. I mean, every right. every river cruise has a captain's night, and some men will bring a sport coat, but many men don't. They they bring a polo and a pair of slacks. You're bringing your clothes overseas, and if you have to bring that second suitcase, it's a hundred dollars each way. Yeah. All of us try and bring one suitcase. That generally means you're not bringing a suit and tie, guys. You're generally leaving it home these days. And the River Cruise Lines acknowledge that. Some men and some women, though, this is their 40th wedding anniversary, and they want to bring it up one night, and that's their choice. The only thing is you're not going to wear jeans and you're not going to wear shorts to dinner. So it's no different on Uniworld. You are not going to be in your tuxedo every night. Might look that way on the pictures, but it's not that way at all. And right. Avalon is the same exact way. You aren't going to wear shorts on Avalon either. It's the same exact atmosphere. It just, they're meant to give you that royal feeling. Really, that's that's all. Perfect. So when we're looking at comparing the two, when we talk about the onboard amenities and dining and that sort of thing, Sherry, how do they compare that way? Amenities. All river cruises have... Start off with the same amenities, your cruise, your food, wine and beer, lunch and dinner, your excursions. Right. Uniworld also includes your transfers. They also include all spirits at all times. And they include a little bit different excursions, and we can talk about that too. But dining is the same. There's all dining is included at all times with both lines. So there really is no difference there. Did I find a difference in the food itself? Well, when we talk about excursions, I'll tell you something about that. We'll, we'll, we'll save that for an excursion. Story. All right. So basically then, Uniworld is probably a little bit more inclusive because if they include the transfers, which can be a significant dollar, yep. um, and then and all spirits right. all the time, that, that makes a difference. And gratuities. Yeah, ang 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 gratuities, yeah. And gratuities. So I always tell people when you see that price point on Uniworld, it is going to be higher. Right. Hands down, it's going to be higher, but there's more reflected in the price. So, exactly. you know, it's it's no different than comparing some ocean lines too. Some include more than others. You yeah. have to know what you're looking at. Uh, really, with the exception of air, Uniworld really is pretty all-inclusive. There are very few optional excursions with Uniworld, whereas many of the other river cruise lines are starting to have more and more optional excursions okay. versus included excursions. So, but with Uniworld, it's still all included. Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. There's a few optionals. What about onboard and entertainment? You know, most most of the river cruise lines, both I think both Avalon and Uniworld both try to do the same thing and bring local entertainment on board. And that's so easy to do on a river cruise because they really do literally hop on board and hop off board. When you're on board a river cruise, they may, in France, bring a, a local gypsy band on board when you are uh, pulled over in Cologne. And then when the gypsy band is done playing, they will literally pull the ship over and they'll hop off the bank and, and go home. It's very <laughs> easy to, to do that, yeah. unlike a river cruise where you're out to sea for the rest of the night. Yeah. Both Avalon and Uniworld will bring in all types of local entertainment because it's very easy to do right all with a view to giving you a flavor of the culture in the area exactly exactly and honestly the same uh the same the same band that may come and perform on uniroll might be the same exact one that comes on board avalon to be perfectly frank with you i'm sure i'm sure because they're going to they're essentially going to the same places they are yeah. and they're and they're, and they're all in independent contractors and they're all just trying to bring part of their their city their town their their locality into you so right. they really don't have any loyalty and nor really should they so so when we think more about the ship what about the staterooms and cabins sherry is there much difference in those is there anything unique about Uniworld or unique about uh, Avalon? One thing that is a little bit different about Uniworld is they have two types of suites 
and they have a little more suites than most of the river cruise lines do. And when I say, of course, not every ship is the same, but I'm talking more about the, the newer ones because right. they've evolved. Right. You know, all cruise lines have evolved. Many years ago, back in 1987, when I took my first cruise, they didn't think that anybody would want balconies and they put about 5% balconies on ships and now 85% balconies right. are on ocean going ships. So all ships have evolved in time and they used to think that nobody would want a step out balcony on a river cruise and now everybody wants a step out balcony on river cruises or they want a French balcony. But more and more people want a little more space on river cruises. So you're finding more and more suites on river cruises too. And they never thought that would happen either. Right. And New World sees this again because of... of of the of what they're drawing in as their demographics, they're having more and more suites. So they they have two. They have a, a grander suite, and then they have a, a little bit more of a step down suite. So it's about square footage right. more than um, amenities. To be honest about it, it's really about square footage. But they have a tendency to to have more about French balconies, and their French balconies are. Um, they're very unique. They are basically about a drop-down window. So you would have a, a window panel and your window will will go the entire way across the end of your, uh, your French balcony and it will drop down so that you will have protection at the bottom and then you will have an opening at the top. Okay. Avalon's is called a panorama suite. They have a much, much larger opening and there's is a and anybody who lives in florida is extremely familiar with this it is a domino effect sliding glass door that folds into each other and opens up this very very grand opening in all honesty it's one of my favorite river cruise um staterooms out there it gives you this unbelievably wide view of of the river rivers if anybody's never been on a river cruise you can almost reach the bank sometimes right. you you can just about reach out and touch it so when you're in your stateroom there are times you can actually be talking to somebody who's biking right <laughs> right across from yeah. you so having that big huge wide opening is is just enthralling sometimes to just sit there and, and watch the world go by. But you'll do that for a while and then you'll end up running upstairs because you want a 360 view. Right. Uniworld has some of the most amazing bedding I've ever slept on. <laughs> it's so comfy. <laughs> so every, <laughs> it's all cozy and comfy. But I, I mean, honestly, it they're both very, very well equipped, very, very nice thought out bathrooms. They have very well thought out rooms. Right. I love the full glass on, on the end of both of them. They did a good job. Both of their rooms are, are very, very well thought out. Right. So they both do an excellent job in their state. They do of yeah. making sure that you can see the world. Yeah. That's the important part. Exactly. Exactly. Do you, either one of them have solo staterooms available or do they just provide with a solo supplement? Then they don't always. Yeah, have no. Solo. It depends on the time of year. Right. It depends on capacity level and yeah. they're not always full solo supplements. Yeah. It's you have to be real flexible on that one. Yeah. So long story and, short, there's no there there's no single no single staterooms at all and solo supplements are only available at certain times a year depending on capacity correct so tell me about the excursions there's definitely a little bit of a difference in excursions okay all excursions with river cruises are included but there are always optional excursions one of the biggest most popular optional excursion there is is to go off to salzburg for the day when you are on the danube right and you get on a bus and you go through the Alps and you spend the day in Salzburg and you come back and you've spent the entire day in Salzburg. And that's generally, not generally, it is an optional with, I think, almost every cruise line from Talc all the way down. Right. It is with um, Uniworld and it is with Avalon. Schomburg Palace, it is an optional with Avalon. It is included with Uniworld. So now you're starting to see a little bit of right. a difference starting to come about. Uniworld has a few more uniqueness to some of their excursions. Um, one of the excursions that I did with Uniworld that was a total blow away unique that I 
would have never seen on Avalon. When I was in Venice, I got to go on a very small excursion with the chef on board, with the head chef on board, to Rialto Market, where he taught us how to buy the fish <laughs> that he was buying right. for dinner that night. And how to buy the octopus that he was buying for dinner that night. He showed us how he, you know, how he, what he looks at, what he was doing. Of course, they knew him. So, yeah. you know, they were, there wasn't a whole lot of bantering going yeah. on because they knew exactly what he was going to pay. Yeah. And then he walked us through the rest of the market and taught us about, you know, what, what is a common thing that they eat and do in Venice. And I mean, how many people get to, how many people get to walk around with a group of seven people and get to talk to the chef on board the ship about all the different foods that he was preparing and how he prepares them and yeah. what it's like to cook for a hundred and you know, 20 people. And I, to me, that was one of the best culinary experiences that I got to do. And then that night when we ordered our appetizer and we ordered the octopus, the chef brought it out and he reminded us, this is what we bought at the market today. And that was my first ever experience with octopus. And it was one of the best I ever had. <laughs> so, you know, that was a very different, and it was included. Yeah. It was a very unique and a little more in depth and differentiated the type of excursions that Uniworld steps up just a little bit from what I've experienced with Avalon. Right. Not to say that Avalon doesn't have amazing excursions they do and i've enjoyed every one of them that i've done there's just a, that little bit of royal royalty that little bit of differentiation and that little bit of why you're going to find a little bit of a price differential with uniworld you wanna, there is a difference right in terms of choices for active people are they are they about the same or would avalon shine a little bit more in that venue you know, Avalon is the one that started Active and Discovery. They really are. They started, they're the ones that came out with more of the, like on the Danube, they have Active and Discovery where they have kayaking right. and they have biking. But Uniworld's caught up with it. They have it too. They all do now. They've, they've all caught up okay. to that. So I would say there's really no difference there. There's a difference in itineraries though, in, between one to the other. And sometimes I have to hop between them, not because um, somebody's looking for a difference in in a difference in the ship, but maybe they're looking for a difference in itinerary. And oftentimes that's what lends me to go from one to the other. It really doesn't have to do with, oh, I want spirits. I mean, I've, I've definitely had people say, I don't need all spirits all mm -hmm. the time. In fact, I don't drink, yeah. but maybe they're looking for a different type of itinerary. Uniworld now has a land and rail itinerary. Um, Avalon doesn't have land and rail. Avalon has a itinerary that is like the most popular one that I have been putting more people on this year and I have scheduled for next year. And that is a Lake Como Milan that goes into Lucerne that puts you on a ship in Basel and takes you into Amsterdam. You cannot find that on Uniworld. You know, there are differences in, in what is offered as well. So yeah, so just to just to dive into that just a little bit more. Correct me if I'm wrong here. It's not necess it's not necessarily some of the little towns and burgs along the way. It's is it the pre and post that you're talking about there? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I should have been more clear about that. Correct. But that's exactly a big difference. Correct. So yeah, so yeah. like like what I was what I was explaining was the um the offerings of extensions. Yeah. Avalon has uh, like everybody a Basel to Amsterdam. Right. But they have an amazing extension that starts in Milan, Lake Como. You spend three days there, then you go spend a day in Lucerne, and then you are off to Basel to catch your ship. That is a four or five night extension that is not offered by Uniworld. Right. On the flip side, Uniworld has a three river French cruise, not offered by Avalon. Uniworld now has a combination extension of rail extension and then their cruising which is not offered by Avalon. So there's a lot of back and yeah, forth yeah. going on that one has that the other one doesn't have. So it really it's an, so then what it has to come down to is a good solid conversation with your guests that you're about to put on board. What what they're really looking for in a vacation. Usually when when I'm talking to somebody, we usually start by talking about, you know, let's let's start talking about what does each what does each line offer? And we talk about the differences in staterooms. There's a difference in staterooms. You know, what do you think that you want in a stateroom? Let's talk about price point. Yeah. And sometimes there's not that much difference in price point. There can be. But again, if I 
put Avalon next to Uniworld, and if I add on the gratuities with Avalon and I add on the transfers with Avalon, then I'm then I'm starting to show you more of an apples to apples comparison, which is generally what I do. Yeah. If I'm generally going to put them side by side, I'm going to put them side by side with equal amenities. Right. That's only the right way for you to make a, a real true comparison. And then we start talking about, well, have you even looked at rivers? And most people have at least looked. They have a general idea of what they think they want. Then we start talking about extensions. Have you thought about, have you thought about, have you thought about? Yeah. Then all of a sudden we start ruling out, well, that's not offered by this. Many times river cruise conversations become a process of elimination rather than a choice. <laughs> It really yeah. does become a process of elimination rather than making an out and out choice. Right. What about air when it comes to Uniworld and Avalon? Do they do they have air contracts like some of the other other cruise lines or or in the case of those two lines, is it mostly that you're going to supply your own air? Both of them have air departments. Both of them are really published air. Avalon does do some air promotions sometimes. Uniworld does some air promotions sometimes. There's caveats that go with them that, you know, sometimes you can and can't deviate. In other right. words, change when you're going in, when you're going out. Sometimes it's economy only which a lot of my people that do river cruises don't want economy air. Sometimes it's you can't pick your own schedule. Right. A lot of people don't like that. You know, that's another whole as a whole other conversation. And again, it becomes a process of elimination. Right. Yes, it, it looks good or no, we're doing let's not go this direction. Let's let's take it on our own. So then basically if I understand what Basically, if I understand you correctly, you're not going to make your decision on your river cruise based on the air. Never. So we danced around it a little bit, Sherry, but, you know, in terms of price point, how do the two compare? There are times when I've found Uniworld to be 10 to 15 percent higher than Avalon. But remember, I'm also adding everything into Avalon when I tell you this. Right. If you're looking at if you're looking at pricing online, you could see a good 20 percent difference. So realistically, then if we compare the two online you'll you could see as much as like what it appears to be a 20 percent difference in, oh, absolutely. in price but you really have to stack the two of them together and put the add-ins in to see where it actually comes out absolutely and i have absolutely had people walk away from uniworld overpriced yeah but they're not as far as part they're not as far apart as one would think Sometimes, yeah. no. What about the demographics on board? Do we find, you know, is it pretty much the same type of folks that are on Avalon as opposed to Uniworld? I think when you're talking about demographics and you're talking about price point and you're talking about disposable income, you're probably talking about a different demographic sometimes. Right. You might be talking about, I'm not talking about much older demographic based on the age of what of the people I put on Uniworld versus what I put on Avalon, there's probably an eight to ten year age difference. Right, but if I if I understand you correctly, you're not you may not notice that so much. But no. the folks that are on Uniworld, because as a rule, uh, they're probably a bit of a higher price point, so you're probably going to find a more well heeled guest on board. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, 100%. Yeah. Well-traveled. Right. No, exactly. Exactly. Sherry, this is absolutely super information. Is there anything else we should talk about when it comes to Uniworld and Avalon? Just go. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. You can't go wrong with either choice. Yeah. They're both good choices. I loved them both. They both have. They both are, were amazing experiences. Neither one of them left me wanting for more. Yeah. Well, they made me wanting for more because they made me want to go again. Don't have anything bad to say about either one of them. They're incredible experiences. They want you to have an incredible experience. Talk to your travel professional to help you make the right choice and go. Sounds like a plan. Now, speaking of going, we talked specifically here today all about Europe pretty much, but do they sell at other, part, other parts of the world? Where do they go besides Europe? Avalon goes to the Amazon. Wow. Um, river cruising as a whole goes to the Nile goes to Vietnam, Cambodia, goes to Africa. I know people can't believe it, but there are river cruises in other areas of the world. So pretty much pretty much anywhere the, the river cruise lines sail, you're going to find both Avalon and Uniworld. And that's like Egypt and that's on the Nile. Uh, the Amazon yep. is, is coming along to be getting to be a big thing. And of course, Vietnam, Cambodia. You got it. Well, Sherry, this has been super. 
if folks wanted to reach out to you about a possible river cruise with either Avalon, Uniworld, or another one, how would they do that? Well, they can call right. me with the number that's scrolling across the bottom, or they can write me with the email address that's scrolling across the bottom. They can even get in touch with you. That's right. And they can also find you in Real Travel Experts. So There you go. All right. Well, that's super. I'll leave those links in the description for those folks that might like to reach out to you. And Sounds good. as always, I have, have to know to what's next on your vacation to-do list. Ooh, well, I just got back from Atlas Ocean Voyages. Okay. Brand new ocean line. Maybe we'll talk about that sometime soon in Spain and Portugal. And I am hoping, it's not on the books yet, but I'm hoping to go to France in September on a yet to be named river cruise. Oh, and I'm going to Mexico to El Dorado Casitas in July. Oh, fantastic. I'm looking forward to hearing all about Atlas in the near future. I think that anybody who enjoys river cruising would enjoy oh, Atlas. Interesting. It's a great place. 200 passengers. Interesting. Well, that sounds like a plan. We'll have to have you back to regale us with all your adventures on Atlas Cruise Lines. That's all good. Right. So with that, Sherry, I'm just going to wish you safe and happy travels and adventures on all your future cruises and travels. May the wind always be at your back, and I hope to see you on a Lido deck sometime soon. Cheers. Take care. You too. And that about wraps it up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Sherry Marsh of Cruise Holidays Land and Sea. If you'd like to reach Sherry, I will leave her contact information in the description. If you'd like to reach us with a question or a suggestion for a future video, you can simply send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or as always, just leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoy this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels. Happy travels.